What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Hawk Talk on Melrose, kind of an impromptu episode. I normally do not do this. I don't know if I've ever recorded an episode by myself, but Tyler is gone this weekend, busy, you know, with family. And so I just thought it was a good idea to fire up the old mic because Iowa football had a pretty big weekend. We had uh, media days on Friday, followed by the kids' day scrimmage on Saturday. And what I mean by a big weekend is we as fans, up until now, we really don't know what's going on. Uh, we can only speculate. We can look at the pictures that they put out after every practice. But other than that, we really don't know until the media days and the kids' day scrimmage. We don't know about any injuries. We don't know about, you know, who's climbing the depth chart, you know, who's looking good, who maybe changed positions. Like, who knows? I mean, we, like, we'd have no idea. And after this weekend, once again, we will not know anymore until um, the Tuesday before the game. Unless I know there's another, they're going to have another big scrimmage that is probably a week and a half from now that I think really determines the, uh, the, 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 the official depth chart going into game week. But I don't know if the media is able to go to that. Um, I would say probably not. So yeah, so the next time we will hear about anything will be that Tuesday when Kirk Ferentz talks to the media and the players talk to the media on that Tuesday before the game. So, um, so yeah, so I kind of have my thoughts kind of around all that. I'm going to kind of combine the Iowa media days with the kids a scrimmage because they kind of go hand in hand. Everything we kind of heard on Friday kind of transitioned into the game on or to the scrimmage on Saturday. So we'll first start with the quarterback situation. I think it's pretty obvious. It's going to be between Petrus and Padilla and you can kind of expand on that. I think it's going to be pretty obvious that Petrus will be the guy, which I'm totally fine by. I've said it. I personally think Petrus will be a lot better of a quarterback and you could laugh and say, well, anything is better than what, what he looked like last year. And I, and I agree with that, but I think he's going to be much better. He looks and sounds way more confident. And I watched, you know, his snaps yesterday. He looks way more comfortable. And I think that is the key for Petrus. He has the arm strength. We know what he's, what he can do there. If he can just maintain that consistency at being comfortable and being confident, I think he can be a great quarterback for us. Padilla, same kind of thing, you know, He's probably not going to start, but he looked pretty good yesterday as well. I, I think he's taking that next step. And so it's it's really good to know that we have at least two capable guys. I think I said it on last episode where I told Tyler, I'd rather go into the situation like this here where we have two capable guys. And yes, you know, are both guys, you know, you hope that they're going to be better than they were last year. But both guys, as of now, we don't know, are are pretty iffy. But I'd rather go into that situation than going in like 2020 where we – had no guy that had any experience at all. So we, we at least have two guys with experience. They've played in big games. Um, and I really personally think that both those guys will, like I said, will take that next step. But I'm going to probably go on the limb and say it's going to be Petrus. Um, I just thought yesterday he had some really nice throws. They were really working on the third downs because that's one area that they've been focusing on is you know converting third downs. He had a really nice 15-yard pass to Sam Laporta on a third and six or third and seven. He had a really nice ball to Arlen Bruce. Probably the best throw the entire day between all three quarterbacks. It was like a 20-yard completion. So he looked pretty good. He looked comfortable, and, and that's all that you can ask for. Uh, running back situation, I thought it, it looks pretty deep. You got Gavin, who was out yesterday, but it sounds like it was just a minor injury. He should be back within the next week. LaShawn looked the part. He, he looked the part, quick feet, good power. He had that one touchdown where he kind of made a guy miss and went in for about three or four yards in. Just, he looks good. And then you got the true freshmen who they have work to do because they're freshmen, but they don't, they look pretty good. I had Caleb Johnson, Patterson, actually Patterson probably looked better than Caleb Johnson did yesterday, but both guys, what I've been hearing, they've been, um, they've been doing really good in fall camp. So you got those two guys along with Gavin and LaShawn now, Will those freshmen play a lot this year? It probably all depends on injuries, but I think regardless that at least one of those guys will probably see action uh, a decent amount. I think with Iowa, especially a team that likes to run the ball a lot, you you want at least three guys. And I think we're going to have four guys, four or five guys. There's another guy out of Des Moines that actually, I forgot what his name is, but uh, Liddell Betts was talking about him and you know saying that he's been looking really good as well. So, we at least know we have guys outside of the William uh, brothers. Well, they're not brothers, but I, I call them the William bros because they have the same last name. Uh, wide receivers, 
this is an area where I'm I'm pretty worried about in a way. So we heard about Deontay Vines getting hurt, wrist injury. I'm going to probably go on the limb and say it's probably a broken wrist if he's going to be out until midseason, which really does suck. Very unfortunate. Now, he wasn't on the two deep, so it wasn't like he was a starter for us. But judging from what I've been hearing and seeing, that he was he was making – his name making a name for himself during fall camp so far he was looking pretty good and and it kind of seemed like he was going to be a guy that was going to see some playing time and, and be in the rotation and having him out kind of does suck because you know we still have Keegan Johnson and, and Brody Brecht who are both still out with injuries now they're supposed to both be back i think later this week but once again i mean with Keegan Johnson you know he didn't play all spring and he hasn't played yet, and it's like, okay, is this injury? Is this going to linger with them? I, I mean, what what what's the scoop here? I mean, they haven't really, you know, said what type of injury it was, but you know, you're always kind of worried about that because we need we need depth at that position. Now, the hope is Keegan is back and he is healthy. And you got the three main guys of Keegan Johnson, Arlen Bruce, who kind of off subject here, but Arlen Bruce, I think he's looking really good. I mean, and, and they were talking about that is um, Kelton Copeland was saying, you know, going into the off season, we really want Arlen to be a hundred percent confident in himself and really uh, take that next step. And, and he does. Um, and then Nico Regani, who we all kind of know about, you know, a consistent guy, he needs to be able to catch the ball. Uh, Cause there was times last year where he dropped some easy passes, but we got, th- got those three guys. And then who's going to take that next, who's going to be the fourth and fifth guy? Is it going to be Brody? Is it going to be Jacob Baustick who looked really good yesterday? You know, he, he's a little bit on the smaller side in terms of, you know, weight. He's six foot two, but he reminds you of like Amir Smith Marset, his freshman year. You know, he kind of came in and he was kind of a small little dude, but you know, he made some plays here and there for us. And so can he be the guy? Alec Wick, who is out of Iowa City. Um, and from what I've heard, has really been been doing good. Arlen Bruce called I said he has a dog in him, catches every ball that is thrown his way. With Alec he kind of reminds me of, can he be a guy that is like a Matt Vandenberg or a Riley McCarron or a Nick Easley, right? Guys that, you know, you don't really hear much of. And then all of a sudden you see this guy and you're like, okay, hey, who's this guy? And then it ends up actually being pretty good for us. So can he be like one of those three guys? And and if so, that, that I think is, is a really good thing for us. Um, tight end situation. I think yesterday, I think Sam Laporta, was lining up at out at wide receiver, which because of, I think some of the issues at the wide receiver, you know, with the depth and stuff like that, with guys being hurt, I, I'm all for it. You know, Sam Laporta actually played right receiver back in, back in high school. And I, like I said, if, if, you know, giving the defense any look out there is pretty good. And then you got Luke Lachey inside. I think this year we're going to see a lot of two tight end sets, maybe even some three tight end sets, because if you do two tight end sets, I mean, you're only going to need two receivers out there. So you got Sam Laporta, you got Luke Lachey, and then you got two guys behind them, Steven Stalianos, the transfer from Lafayette, who big dude, six foot five, 264 pounds, good run blocker, but he can also go out and, you know, and he has pretty good hands. And then you got the other tight end, freshman Addison Ostrenga. I don't know, I probably pronounced his last name wrong, former basketball recruit for Iowa, had some really nice catches yesterday. And then one play where he caught the ball and just plowed through a guy for a touchdown. And from what I kind of heard, he he arrived on campus in June and he has really uh, figured out things. And I think he's going to be probably the third guy, you know, and you go back to Sam Laporta back in 2019. He was a freshman, right? Uh, Noah Fant, you know, TJ Hawkinson. I mean, these guys, I mean, that's one area where, you know, we sometimes play tight ends. And so you, I, I fully expect this Addison Ostranga, I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong, um, to play a decent amount. So we got four guys at the tight end position with obviously Laporta, Lachey, um, St- Stalianos, and then uh, Addison. So I think we're, I think we're good there. I, I think we're good at tight end. And once again, we're going to see a lot of two tight end sets, maybe even some three tight end sets uh, this year. At offense line, we had some, we have some injuries there. I, I don't know. You, it just depends who you talk to because some people, some people you talk to, they don't seem too worried as long as we stay healthy and then you got some that are, are a little worried. Um, I think right now, Logan Jones at center. I thought, I feel like that is, is almost known that he's going to be the starting center. And um, you know, he, he was a center during spring ball, looked comfortable there. The dude 
I saw the other day what he hang cleans and squats is like unbelievable. Um, so could he be the next Tyler Lindenbaum? I don't know. Cause Tyler, as we all know, you know, went from defense to offense, same thing as Logan Jones. Then you got, um, Mason Richmond, who was out yesterday, but it sounds like he's going to be back. It's just a minor injury. Um, he's going to be at left tackle. George Barnett, the offensive line coach thinks he could be an elite at left tackle, which we need. Um, I think at left guard will be Tyler Ellsbury. Right guard still in the air. I don't know who it's going to be. Connor Colby, who was a guard, is playing at tackle due to some some injuries. And Ference praised praise him. Seems like he's a natural tackle. And so I think he's probably going to be the starting right tackle for us. And then really that leaves just the right right guard. Who's that going to be? Is it going to be Jack Plum? Is it going to be Nick DeJong? Is it going to be Bo Stevens? Um, and then that David... Uh, De, De Cavo, I, I don't know what his last name is. He was a, he has not played this fall. He has undisclosed undisclosed medical issue. I don't know what that could be. So I feel good as long as we stay healthy. Okay, I think the starting five, you got Mason Richmond, you got Tyler Ellsbury, you got Logan Jones, right guard, I don't know. I mean, we got guys that are capable. Who knows who it's going to be? And then Connor Colby, that's a pretty good offense line as long as they stay healthy. So we'll just have to kind of see how that kind of plays out. And then on the defense, uh, you know, defense line, Lucas Van Ness had a great day yesterday. Uh, Joe Evans did not play. Another kind of minor injury should be back. But the the starting defensive line yesterday was Lucas Van Ness, Noah Shannon, Logan Lee, and John Wagner. Apparently Noah, Noah Shannon looked really good yesterday. I think he's going to take that next step, which which is huge. We have a lot of depth at that position as well, at defensive line. Um, I think it's kind of obvious, kind of known. We want to play eight to ten guys. So you got those guys with Joe Evans back, you know, Yaya Black, Jeremiah Pittman, and then this new guy that we all knew was going to be a stud for us, maybe not right away, but looks apart. And Kirk Ferentz even said probably will not be able to redshirt him because he's pretty much that good. He doesn't want to say it, but pretty much that good. Aaron Graves, who I think is going to have a great career at Iowa. So I think the defensive line is well established and going to be really good. I mean, I, I, Tyler and I have said it. When you have a guy in like Lucas Van Ness who is that good and probably will not start as long as Joe Evans is healthy, I mean, that is a good problem to have. Very good problem to have. And then at the defensive tackle position, you got guys like Yaya Black and Jeremiah Pittman and maybe even Aaron Graves, guys that could are capable, probably capable starters coming off the bench because we got two guys in front of them that are just as good. I mean, that's a good problem to have. Um, really good problem to have. Tight end situation, or not tight ends, linebackers. We all know about the linebackers. We know what we're going to get um, out of the linebackers. But the one thing is what we saw yesterday was the 4-2-5 when we had the cash. It was actually Campbell and Jacobs and instead of Campbell and Benson from last year. And I think with, with Jacobs, you get just more of that. You know, he's more of an athlete. You know, Seth Benson, great linebacker, but you – Jacobs is more of an athlete, and, and if he has improved in, in the passing game, which is something that I said I've been saying the last couple of weeks, is that's one area where Justin Jacobs has to get better at is pass coverage. That was something he kind of lacked last year. And if he can improve on that, I think I like that, the 4 5 with, with Campbell and, and Jacobs. Uh, Cooper DeGene still doesn't really have a defined spot. He did play first-team cash, but he was kind of all over the field. Um, very athletic will be a big part on Iowa's D this year, whether it's at corner, whether it's playing cash, whether it's at safety, but they really don't know yet where he's going to play, but pretty much kind of what they said is regardless, he's going to see the field a lot. Um, Riley Moss did not participate. He participated in the seven on seven, did not participate on the 11 on 11. Pa- apparently he's had an, uh, an illness. So we should be good there. Uh, Jamari Harris, he was also out yesterday. I think I saw somewhere where he had something over his right calf. I have not heard much about him, about you know what's going on there. Now he's out that first game due to the the DUI or yeah, DUI he had a couple months ago. So he's out that first game suspended. Uh, but it kind of sounds like that's just a minor injury. So he also didn't didn't play yesterday as well. So Terry Roberts obviously got the start. Um, I'm not too worried about the about the corners. We got guys that are that are just as capable. Um, TJ Hall, who's that freshman, he had about 25 pounds since coming to Iowa. He was one of the guys that enrolled early back in January. Um, and then Brendan DS Fernandez, 
who I've heard some good things about as well. So we'll kind of have to see how that kind of goes. Uh, but, and then the safeties, obviously Kayvon Merriweather and then Quinn Schulte will more than likely be the safeties. And another guy, you know, a fan favorite, Xavier Nwamka, five-star out of uh, Des Moines, um, had a great day yesterday. Another guy where you watched him yesterday, had that really good interception, made some great plays. He's a guy that you just, you cannot have on the sidelines. And so he's another player that I think will see the field a decent amount, whether it's at corner or probably more, whether it's at safety, whether free safety or, or strong safety or at the cash position from time to time. Like he's the type of guy, you know, he's going to play on special teams, but he's the type of guy that he's going to have to see the field ever so often. And once again, another great problem to have. You know, I think it's a great problem to have a guy like Cooper DeGene and Xavier and and possibly TJ Hall or Brendan D- DS Fernandez, guys like that that are capable starters, but it's kind of like, okay, where do we put them at? Because we have other guys, or you know, it's like, okay, do we put them there? Do we put them there? And it's not because we it's not like, you know, it's because they're not very good and we just don't know where to put them at. It's because they're good and we just we have a good problem on our hands, which is which is awesome to see. I think we're going to see back in the day, we did not see this a lot where freshmen played, but I think this year it's pretty obvious that um, we're going to see a handful of freshmen, Xavier, TJ Hall, Jacob uh, Baustick, Aaron Graves, a- Addison Ostranga. I think all those guys are going to see the field a decent amount. And then obviously don't forget about, you know, the two running backs and Caleb Johnson. And uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Jack's Jackson Patterson. I'm just going to say Patterson, both guys that are, that are going to, I think down the road, be really good for us. I think both of those guys can contribute this year. I don't know how good they will be as being freshmen, but um, there's a lot of excitement, a lot of excitement about this freshman class. And I think there's a lot of potential that they can bring to this team this year. And I think it's only going to help. So, and then the last thing I want to cover, you thought I would forget about this, but field goal kicking. Tyler and I talked about this, whether it, I think it was this last episode, we were kind of concerned about the field goal kicking because spring game, they look pretty bad. Now, granted, it was very windy, just like the entire month of April back in Iowa and Nebraska. I live in Nebraska. Um, and it was really windy that day and they did not look very good, but they looked pretty good yesterday. They nailed all 15 combined field goals, Aaron, Aaron Blom and Drew Stevens, and a couple of them were were 50 yard or 55 yard field goal and they were 15 for 15. I think that is great news. Now, once again, they have yet to kick in front of 70,000 fans, but I think yesterday in front of at least some fans to go out there and go 15 for 15, I think that's pretty damn good. I think they have I think that's really good and having two guys that are capable. Um and so that's still like I said going into that first week is it kind of an area to watch. Now I I said to Tyler, I want to score as many touchdowns as possible that first game, but I also want to see some times where we kick some field goals because I want to know if they can, if they are capable of kicking it in front of 70,000 fans, right? Which I think yesterday, before yesterday, I didn't feel very confident, but after yesterday, I feel a lot more confident with that. So that's kind of it. I mean, that's really just a kind of a breakdown of what I kind of saw uh, yesterday in Iowa Media Days. You know, once again, injury wise, there's, you know, some injuries that are going to, you know, you got Justin Britt, who we all knew about, um, the guy at the guy at ride receiver, Jackson Ritter, you know, we know those two guys are out for the year. And then we knew about, you know, we heard about Devontae Vines going to be out half, you know, halfway of the season, um, should be back middle of the season. And then we had a handful of guys that are just kind of banged up right now. And I think that ended up being like over 20 guys that did not play yesterday. But the good news is a lot of them, they're just minor injuries. They should be back. Hopefully, knock on wood, be back. Um, because like you got guys like Mason Richmond, you got guys like Keegan Johnson, right? Uh, Jamari Harris. You know, you want those guys to be 100%. And I hate saying the word 100% because no football player after camp and games are ever 100%, but at least healthy, right? And so... Um, that is the goal these next couple of weeks is no more, you know, no more serious injuries. And hopefully all these guys that were hurt or have been hurt, get back and are, are good to go. So other than that, I really, I mean, I have some other things, but I'm just going to wait until kind of Thursday. So the plan is we will have a Thursday episode just like normal. What's awesome about this next upcoming episode though, is Colby will be joining the show. This is a guy you guys probably know back in the day was on every episode 
just got pretty busy, got other things going on. So it's hard for him to, to be on every episode. The goal is this year to have him on more times than not, but he will be joining the show alongside, alongside Tyler and I, we will go through the kids day and uh, Iowa media days. You could be like, well, what's the point? You just talk about it all. But there's some other things that I, I do have that I'm going to wait till Thursday. And I'm sure they have their thoughts on what they saw or what they heard. And we'll just kind of go back and forth there. We got some other topics lined up as well. So you do not want to miss that. They'll be coming out this Thursday. Um, really excited about that. But that is it for this episode. Short and sweet. Just kind of want to share my thoughts. We'll be back here again in about four days. I'm recording this on Sunday. So we are officially 20 days away from Hawkeye football. 20 days until I'm actually on Melrose. Hawk Talk on Melrose. Not on Melrose right now, but in 20 days, I will be. I'm very, very excited. So everyone have a good week and we will talk to you guys on Thursday. Go Hawks.